Hi guys, we're heading to Walmart and I'm going to do a little bit of research that I'm going to share with you on how Walmart's trying to trick us. You have to be a savvy shopper. You know how we all learned a while ago that when you buy in bulk, even though that item will be more expensive because it's bigger, you're paying less per pound. So let's say a one pound bag of rice costs a dollar. So it's a dollar a pound. But a five pound bag of rice costs four dollars. So you think, oh, four dollars. I don't want to spend four dollars. But you're paying less per pound, right? Right? We all remember learning that. But I found at Walmart, tricky dickies that they are, they know we think that way, right? So now they're trying to take advantage of us trying to be smart, responsible shoppers and make you think that that larger size is an economy size, it's the bargain, it's the better one to buy. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes the bigger size is actually more per pound. And you're getting screwed by just thinking, oh, I'll get the giant value pack. They put the word value on it. I mean, talk about deception. So we're going to take a little look at some Walmart products and see, are you really getting a better deal when you buy in bulk, when you get that bigger product? When is it worth buying in bulk? And when is it better just to buy the smaller product? And you know what? In general, you also have to remember, those of you who like to buy in bulk, and you guys know this too, it's just a little reminder, because I feel like I'd be remiss in not mentioning it. Those of you who like to go to Costco or Sam's Club and, you know, buy in bulk. And when those stores first opened, I was a huge fan. I was like, oh my God, a 75 pound bag of flour. I mean, my dreams are come true. Like, I must get that. But you always have to remember when you buy that massive amount. I mean, this is great for big families. But when you're just a single mom and a daughter, how long is it going to take you to use up 75 pounds of flour? I don't know. You have to figure that out. It might take so long that it's not worth buying that much. Not that flour goes bad, but you know, sometimes it gets those little mealy bugs in it that are not fun. So whatever the bulk product is, you have to think, can, can I use this up before it's going to go bad? using my common sense to decide when it's bad, not the best buy date or the expiration date, which is not even a real thing. You know what I'm saying. So let's go into Walmart. We're gonna, we're gonna be like super sneaky spies, all right? So yeah, right, frugal mommy, tell us to be quiet when you're the loud mouth of the century. Okay, maybe I am, but hey, if there's a fire and you need someone to yell, fire, you want a loud mouth, okay? I mean, a soft talker yelling fire? What good is that? That is not, people will die. People die because of soft talkers. My voice, which can cut through steel and cement walls, saves lives. Okay, I'm in Walmart. We're on our mission. But I always go check the clearance aisle first, just in case. And, oh my gosh, all these cool craft kits and stuff are on sale that were originally 20 bucks, are on sale for $5. So I'm picking some stuff up. I'm starting birthday present shopping and Christmas shopping now. I mean, I'd rather pay $5 now than $20 uh, next December. Yeah. So I'm psyched. So there's our little tip also. Make sure if your Walmart has a clearance aisle, you check that clearance aisle. And this is a great time of year to buy Christmas ornaments and Christmas lights. If, like us, your kittens chewed through all your Christmas light wires and destroyed them. I mean, just look at this Harry Potter Lego thing. This is on sale for $11. Legos are so expensive. And then there are a whole bunch of other sciency things and craft things. My cart is full. I know I've gone crazy. But they're like $20 items that are on sale for five bucks each. Here we go. Check out these Walmart brand cereals. You've got their Crunchy Honey Oats, which is their version of Honey Bunches of Oats. We have an 18 ounce package that's $1.33, so that's $1.19 per pound. Then you go to the larger package, 28 ounces. So it's 10 more ounces, it's $2.68, $1.54 a pound. So it's more expensive per pound. The larger size is more expensive per pound than the smaller size. There we have Walmart's version of Honey Nut Cheerios. We've got the 12.25 ounce box 
for $1.23, that's $1.61 per pound. The bigger box, 21 ounces, a little less than doubled, is $2.17 a pound. So the bigger one is 56 cents per pound more expensive than the smaller box. So don't be suckered into thinking, oh, the bigger box is a better bargain. It's not. I mean, look at the price, $1.23. If you doubled that, that would be $2.46, and that would be 24 and a half ounces. This is only 21 ounces, and it's more than $2.46. Isn't that bizarre? And most people just think, oh, I know, I'm smart now, I'm savvy. I know that when you get the bigger container, it's less per unit. Well, no, no, it's not always. You have to be so careful. Okay, here we have the big, big jug of coffee. It's a three pound barrel of coffee. It's $7.92, $2.64 a pound. It's a pretty good price on coffee, $2.64 a pound. It says value size, right? Let's review, $2.64 a pound. You get the smaller size, which is 30.5 ounces, just a normal sized bucket of coffee here. It goes for $4.73, which is $2.49 a pound. This is actually 15 cents less per pound. The smaller one is 15 cents less per pound than the value size. This is my biggest lesson of the day. Just because it says value size doesn't mean it is. Don't assume, don't just grab the biggest one. You've got to be able to do the math. In fact, you don't have to be able to do the math because generally they do it for you. You remember back in school when you didn't like math and you said, oh, what am I going to ever need this for? Okay, this is what you need it for. You need to be able to do, well, you basically need to be able to read, okay? Or bring a calculator with you. But this is math. This is why you need math in the real world. So you don't get ripped off thinking you're getting this great value. Are you kidding me? But you're paying 15 cents more per pound to get it in a bigger container? What? Walmart. Okay, let's take a look at the Walmart brand peanut butter. We have this 40 ounce container of creamy peanut butter. It sells for $2.26, which is 90.4 cents a pound. Then we've got this huge four pound, it's a 64 ounce big mama jug of peanut butter. It sells for $3.58, 89.5 cents a pound. So yes, it's less per pound. The bigger one is less per pound, but not even by a whole penny. By 0.9 cents. So unless you have the cupboard space and that you have the need of the convenience of a massive amount of peanut butter because you go through a lot because you have a family of 15 kids, which is fine. I mean, if you need a lot of peanut butter at one time, hey, go for it. But you're only saving 0.9 cents per pound, right? So you'd have to go through 100 pounds of peanut butter just to have saved 90 cents. Some people don't have the cupboard space or the need for that much peanut butter at one time. So this significantly smaller container, fundamentally same price jar of peanut butter, would actually be a better idea. I mean, for the great big volume bargain jug, you'd expect a better savings than 0.9 cents. I would anyway. Giant can of green beans, 6.3 pound can of green beans. Okay, really great if you're having a huge family meal or a church supper, or whatever, and you just you just need this massive amount. It's 427 for that big old barrel and it's 67.7 cents per pound. So let's compare that to just a normal sized can. All right. Now check out this tiny little can of green beans. It's only 8 ounces. I don't know who other than my grandmother buys such tiny amounts. My grandmother, when she was like 90 years old and she was just cooking for herself, would buy these tiny things, but they're really not a good deal because look, $2 for that can of green beans, $1.14 per pound, that is not a good deal. When you get just your normal size can, your standard size, this is a 14 ounce can of green beans, look at that, that's going for 50 cents, 55.2 cents per pound. So, what are you going to do? Get the huge can? or get more of the small cans. Look at this one size up. It says family size. It's 28 ounces. So it's almost double this one. It goes for 96 cents, so it's 54.9 cents per pound, as opposed to 55.2 cents. That's a difference of 
three cents. The bargain family size is only saving you 0.3 cents per pound. That's not a massive savings, if you ask me. Okay, here's a weird one. You have these chipped peas snacks, which are, they're like cheese doodles, but they're made from chickpeas. And I like them, and they're vegan, and I don't buy them because they're expensive. So they're selling them for $2.98. Definitely a better price than Whole Foods, by the way. So that's $9.54 a pound, right? $9.54 a pound. You have this bigger package, so that should be a better deal, right? But I think they're in the little individual snack packs, six snack packs. So it's $5.48, $14.62 a pound. $14.62 a pound as opposed to $9.54 a pound. So buy the smaller bag and divide the snack up into baggies, which you wash after each use and save. You don't just throw away your baggies each time you use them. You get your own little baggies, which you're getting for snacks anyway to put in your kids' lunches, and get the smaller bag. Do not opt for the larger bag in the convenience of these little snack pouches because it's significantly more per pound, like 50% more, okay? That's crazy. We've got these huge jugs, basically, of animal crackers, huge. And this is in the baby section, not in the normal cookie area. It's 6.48 for this big jug. It's a two pound, 13 ounce jug, 45 ounces. So it says 2.31 per pound. Now we're in your standard cookie aisle. That's a 32 ounce bag, so it's just slightly less. The picture makes them look pretty much like they're the same thing. And they are $1.37 per pound. If you're opting for the convenience of the little individual bags, instead of just buying the big bag and putting a handful into a snack bag all by yourself, you're gonna pay $4.54. This one is just two ounces over the one pound. It's 18 ounces instead of 16 ounces, but it's six dollars and six cents per pound you're spending just for the convenience of the little bags. Okay, check it out in cold cuts. We have a nine ounce package of sliced honey ham for 250. That's 445 a pound. Nine ounce package, 445 a pound. Jump down to the 16 ounce package, and it's 497 a pound. So the bigger package more per pound, $4.97 a pound for the big one, $4.45 a pound for the little one. Are you starting to feel ripped off? Same deal for the turkey breast, $4.45 for the little package, $4.97 a pound for the larger pound package. Rotisserie chicken breast, nine ounce package, $4.45 a pound. Rotisserie chicken breast, one pound package, $4.97 a pound. We have the 15 ounce smaller container of 4C seasoned breadcrumbs, $1.47 per pound. The larger 24 ounce container should be less per pound, less than $1.47 per pound. But no, it's $1.50 per pound. Crazy? Same diff on the plain breadcrumbs. It's not just the seasoned, it's the plain. They're trying to trick you with both. All right, let's take a look at fabric softener. We have big bottles of Downy. They're $9.94, $2.47 a quart. Then you have the smaller bottle of Downy, $6.94, $2.47 a quart. So the per quart price is exactly the same. In this case, I would get the smaller bottle because studies have shown that when you get a huge bottle of something, you use more per use because there's this psychological effect of thinking, oh, I have so much, and you just pour a ton in I know you're all going to say, no, I measure very carefully, but hey, they have done studies on this. People tend to use more when it's a really big container. So in this case, the price per quart's the same. Use the smaller container. But then bear in mind, the Walmart brand is only $1.73 per quart. Okay, here we have cereal. We have the family size Cinnamon Toast Crunch, 19.3 ounces. So it's $3.64 for the box, $3.02 per pound. Here's the 12 ounce box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It goes for $2.68, so that's $3.58 a pound. So the family size package is definitely the better deal, as long as having that enormous box doesn't trick you into eating a larger amount of cereal and going through it a lot faster and thus spending more money because your brain's tricked into thinking, oh, I've got so, so much of it, I can have a huge bowl. So for the most part, it definitely seems like it's a better deal per unit at Walmart for the, all the cleaning products. You just have to really be careful about that psychological phenomenon 
which I didn't make this up. This is real. This is not just my little wacko theory. This is, it's been studied. This is real. When you have a bigger container, you tend to use more per use, and then you're kind of blowing that savings factor. So, for example, and, and maybe it's just me. I mean, you kind of have to play tricks with your own mind sometimes. You have to trick your own brain. When I have a small jug of laundry detergent, there's this perception, subconscious perception, that I don't have very much. So I have to be careful with it and ration it. So I'm really careful about measuring the laundry detergent, you know, in the lid. Maybe use a little bit less because I need to make it stretch because I only have this little bottle. But when I have a huge bottle, of laundry detergent. I think there's this subconscious perception of abundance. I have so much. It's party time in the laundry room. So I'll measure it in the cup and I'll I'll pour it till it's overflowing and pour the cup in and glug a little bit more into the laundry and hallelujah, my clothes are going to get so clean. Which, by the way, is not how it works either because if you put too much laundry detergent in, it doesn't rinse out and that's not good either. So you have to realize that there's that psychological phenomenon possibly going on inside your brain. I mean, it seems to happen in mine and you have to trick yourself. So I think what a good thing to do would be if you get the larger container to get the savings per unit, you really have to ration it out. So pour some of it into a smaller container if you have a smaller container. And then tell yourself, okay, this smaller container of laundry detergent, this has to last me a whole month. I need to be careful with how much I use and just forget about that huge Mongo value jug you have hidden off to the side. Ration yourself. That's really the same phenomenon that goes with how to stretch your food stamps. People get their food stamp money put on, I think at midnight, the first of the month, let's say. And I've seen lots of documentaries on YouTube about grocery stores that do this incredible business at midnight when the food stamp cards have been reloaded. Towards the end of the month, nobody's shopping. You know, for the grocery stores that are in the high food stamp recipient communities. But as soon as the food stamp money's loaded, I mean, people go out in the middle of the night to do their shopping. They're so excited to have their money and to be able to have some food in the house. Now, we all know food stamps are not supposed to be your sole source of food. It's supposed to be a supplemental program. That's the S in SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. But we also know that a lot of people are heavily relying on their food stamps. It's not a supplement. It's the whole deal for some people. And people generally say that their food stamps will last two and a half to three weeks. And then at the end of the month, they are screwed. Well, there's the problem also. When you get your food stamp money loaded on your card and you have this perception of abundance all of a sudden, whereas 24 hours ago, you were out. You were skinned. You got nothing. You got an apple and half a head of iceberg lettuce in the fridge and you have no money left on your food stamp card. Okay, then all of a sudden you have this money. You have, you know, you might have $200 put on it all of a sudden if that's what you qualify for and you have that size family. So you go out at midnight and you just buy all this food because you have money all of a sudden and you've gone without so you feel that you deserve treats. and. I've seen it. I've, I've seen it over and over where people are buying things. And I'm not saying people don't have the right to make whatever choices they want to make. But people are buying things that are not giving them the most nutritional bang for their buck. And if you're going to complain that you run out of food stamps two and a half to three weeks into the month, then don't be wasting your food stamp money on soda, for example. And other packaged treats like packaged cookies or chips, things like that. You do much better to spend your food stamp money on some flour and some shortening and some sugar and bake your own cookies. I mean, you'll get much more bang for your buck if you're doing your own cooking, if you are able. If you have the kitchen facilities and the know-how to bake a cookie, you're going to do much better than buying your packaged Chips Ahoy or, or whatever it is. And you have to really fight that feeling of, oh, I have so much all of a sudden and I can just go wild and spend. And I understand that feeling because I've had that too. 
when I was in grad school, I was waiting for my student loan to come through and the money didn't come through till April. I was almost done with my degree. You know, I finished it in May and the money didn't come through till April. So I had really been struggling and going without that whole school year and really scrimping and saving. So then all of a sudden I had this student loan money, which of course I had to pay back, but I had this perception of, oh my God, I've got money in the bank all of a sudden. I can buy the food I want. I can go buy that decorative mirror for my wall. I can go buy those fancy hand-blown Christmas ornaments. I don't know what I bought, a whole bunch of stuff. And then I realized, wait a minute, this isn't just like money. It's not my salary. I mean, I have to pay this back. So I had to reel it in. But I remember that feeling of, all of a sudden like, huh, I don't have to scrimp so much and I can actually just go buy some things that I might enjoy. Like, I get that. But if you're relying that heavily on food stamps to get you through the whole month, you can't go crazy that first day you get them. You have to ration the food stamp money across the month. And of course, if it makes more economic sense to buy a 20 pound bag of rice rather than four five pound bags of rice, you get the 20 pound bag of rice that first week, but then you wrap it ration it. You have to ration it throughout the month. You, you can't blow all your food stamps that first night. You have to say, okay, I'm going to spend half of it tonight and try to stretch the food. I'm going to buy two weeks worth of food. I'm going to do my darndest to buy two weeks worth of food. So then I can come back two weeks later and have the same amount of money to spend for the second half of the month. One great thing about food stamps also is you can buy seeds. So if you have any ability to garden, any opportunity, you know, a, a, a sunny window where you can put a pot with dirt and little lettuce seeds or something. I mean, that's great to be able to grow your own food. I'm just saying it's the same psychological phenomenon of thinking you have a lot and then overdoing it. Same thing with these large value packs. Same thing when you have 24 rolls of paper towel all of a sudden you just feel like I can use paper towel for everything whereas when you have one roll in the house you're thinking wow I, I, I need to really be careful with my paper towel I'm gonna save that for the grossest cat vomit messes and not use my rags and dish towels for that I'll use my rags and dish towels for everything else but I'm just gonna save my paper towel for the really worst messes but if you have a ton of paper towel in the house just psychologically you feel like I can take advantage of the convenience of having a lot of paper towel. Just how the mind works. If the savings isn't significant in getting the giant value pack, you might be better off getting the smaller pack and then, for, and, and then you don't have to worry about tricking yourself into not overusing. That's all I'm saying. Did that make sense? Here's a kind of a weird one. We have asparagus spears extra long. All right, we have a tall can for $1.96, 2 dollars a pound, it's 15 ounces. We have the short can of asparagus, 14.5 ounces, so just half an ounce less, selling for a dollar, only a dollar 11 a pound. That's kind of weird. I mean, it's not the exact same product because you have extra long ones not cut yet. I mean, they're not that long because this can isn't that huge. But basically the same product, just cut up asparagus, slightly smaller can, for almost a dollar less per pound. Is that kind of crazy? Now, I don't know if you need your asparagus extra long and not cut yet, but personally, I would go for the cut spears and call it a day. Look at this little bottle of classic olive oil. It goes for 252, that's 475 a quart. It's 502 milliliters. Okay, and this one's 754 milliliters. It's 429 a quart. So that's less per quart, right? So this bigger one is a better deal than that little one. Then go down to this giant jug. That should be the best deal ever, right? That's almost three liters. That's going for 1784. That's 566 a quart as opposed to 429 a quart. That's considerably more per quart to get this fabulous value giant jug. So really the best deal is your 429 a quart, the medium size, which is 754 milliliters. Pretty crazy if you ask me. Now look at your basic canola oil. That is a 48 fluid ounce container of canola oil for $1.38, that's 92 cents a quart. Now go to this 
big jug of canola oil, that should be less per unit, right? Well, that's $1.22 per quart. And that's a one gallon jug. $1.22 per quart as opposed to 92 cents a quart. So 30 cents per quart more expensive to buy the giant jug? Seriously? Here's another one. This stuff is really blowing my mind. You have the Walmart brand of baking soda. There's your standard little 16 ounce box for 46 cents. That's a good price, 46 cents a pound. Oh, but you want a better deal. You'll go ahead and get the big box because it'll be less per pound. 224 for the four pound box, but it's 56 cents per pound. So you're paying 10 cents more per pound to get the big box of baking soda than it would cost you to get the little box. All right, now look at our chocolate chips. Here is your standard regular sized bag, 12 ounce bag of Walmart brand chocolate chips. Selling for $1.33, that's a good price, $1.78 per pound. Oh, but wait, we love chocolate chips. We're gonna bake a lot. Let's just go ahead and get the bigger bag. Let's get the 24 ounce bag, because that's gonna be a better deal, right? Oh no, it's over twice the price. It's twice the number of chips, but over twice the price at 388, 259 a pound. If you got two of these bags at 12 ounces each, that would be 24 ounces, and that would cost you $2.66. Or you can just get the 24 ounce bag and pay 266. Wait, no, you're not gonna pay 266. You're gonna pay 388, $1.22 more. Are you kidding me? We have a 20 ounce can of Dinty More Beef Stew at $1.67 per pound. 208 for 20 ounces. Jump down to the 38 ounce can and it's $1.76 per pound. So 418, $1.76 per pound for the bigger one, $1.67 per pound for the smaller one. Oh, Walmart, you are so tricky. I'm not saying it's every product at Walmart that has this weird reversal where the larger product is actually more expensive per unit than the smaller product, but it's happening enough. There are enough examples of it that you really need to be careful when you're shopping. Don't be suckered into thinking that the bigger size is always the bargain because it simply is not. They're trying to trick you. Don't let Walmart get one over on you. Don't they own us enough as it is? All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope it's helpful. I hope it gets everybody thinking. Thanks for watching. See you next time.